around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Don't shoot, Mr. Dillon. It's Chester. What? Oh, you darn fool. I'm sorry, sir. I, I didn't see you laying there. Uh, you're slamming doors. You always do that? Who do you think it was? Is there somebody after you? Uh, there could be, Chester. A lot of people. <clears throat> Yo, what do you got there? A telegram. I happened to be passing by the depot and they gave it to me. Here. Oh, you read it. I haven't got my eyes on it. All right, sir. My, it's from Washington, Mr. Dillon, from the government. Well, then they still know where I am anyway. Well, yes, sir, it's addressed to you. Well, read it, Chester. All right. It says, proceed to Fort Larned and receive return prisoner from Colonel Bloor. Stop. You will hold and dodge until arrival of Roger Phillips of Boston. Stop. Signed, C.J. Calvert, War Department. What's it mean? Well, as usual, it doesn't explain much, Chester. But Fort Larned is a 55-mile ride from here. i got to go over and pick up some prisoner and then ride 55 miles back to Dodge with him. Yes, but what for, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Maybe that man from Boston can explain it when he gets here. That colonel at Fort Larned must know. Oh, well, you might. Uh, can I go with you? All right. We'll start in the morning at daylight. <laughs> Have a chair, Marshal. Oh, thank you. Our quarters aren't luxurious here, but we'll find a place of some sort for you tonight. Oh, well, there are two of us, Colonel. Oh, fine. And when will you want to start back to Dodge? Uh, tomorrow, if the prisoner's ready. Prisoner? Uh, now, don't tell me they got everything mixed up again. I came here to pick up a return prisoner, whatever that is. And that's the only description you had? That's all. I have to hold him in Dodge till somebody from Boston comes after him. Uh, I'd better explain, Marshal. The prisoner was a captive of the Cheyennes and returned to us several weeks ago. Oh, oh, I see. Well, can't you keep him here at Fort Leonard or just send him home? It's a woman, Marshal. What? Mrs. Phillips. And the man who's coming out from Boston for her is her husband. It'll take him several weeks, so it was thought best that Mrs. Phillips should be in Dodge. <laughs> I never heard of sending a woman to Dodge to her to be better off. But I'll take her there, and that's what they want. Where'd you find her, anyway? Well, perhaps I should tell you the whole story. Mrs. Phillips was captured while traveling to join her husband in Denver ten years ago. Ten years? That's a long time for a woman to live with Indians. Yes, it is. Her stage was attacked by the Cheyennes, and everyone but her was killed. Yeah. Well, how'd you get hold of her? She won't talk much, Marshal, but evidently she managed to escape. You see, we were chasing a band of Cheyennes led by Chief Blackhorn a few weeks back, and we ran into Mrs. Phillips and a girl out on the prairie. A girl? A Cheyenne, not a white girl. Now, that's strange. But anyway, what are you going to do with the girl, Colonel? It's all been decided in Washington. She's to go on to a reservation. Oh, well, good. Then I don't have to worry about her. Well, I'm afraid, Marshal, it's going to take a little time. Huh? What do you mean? Mrs. Phillips absolutely refuses to be separated from her. But right now, I have to take them both to Dodge, huh? I'm afraid so. I'll send for the girl when Mrs. Phillips goes home. Mm. How old's the girl, Colonel? Perhaps somewhere between eight and twelve. 
Well, I suppose I'll meet him at supper. I don't think so. She insists on eating alone with the girl. Oh, and by the way, they're both still in Indian dress. You'll have to do something about that and dodge. <laughs> Colonel, do you have a bottle of good whiskey hidden in that desk? <laughs> of course I have, Marshal. <laughs> but don't worry. I'm sure everything will go smoothly. Sure. <laughs> I'll ask the colonel if he can spare a wagon, Chester. Well, it's going to be an awful slow trip in a wagon. Well, it can't be helped. At least we're getting an early start. Yes, sir. Hey, by golly, there's the colonel. Soldiers always get up early, Chester. <laughs> that would keep me out of the army all by itself. <laughs> well, good morning, colonel. Good morning, Marshal. Chester. Good morning, sir. Mrs. Phillips is waiting inside, Marshal. Shall we go in? Oh, uh, well, you better stay here, Chester. Yes, sir. Mrs. Phillips, I've brought Marshal Dillon. How do you do, Marshal? Ma'am. Come in, gentlemen. This is Gray Fawn. You may call her Fawn if you prefer. No. Uh, does she speak English, ma'am? A little, but you mustn't expect her to talk. She's a little too frightened of white men. I've uh, come to take you to Dodge, Miss Phillips. I know. It's very kind of you. We're ready. Good. I forgot to ask you, Colonel, if I could borrow a wagon. Why, certainly, Marshal. And I'll send a soldier along to drive it. That won't be necessary, gentlemen. Fawn and I have horses and we can ride. That's a long trip, ma'am. I'm sure we've made longer ones, Marshal. We're ready to leave when you are. I'll have your horses brought up at once, Mrs. Phillips. Thank you, Colonel. It's 55 miles, ma'am, and uh, there's no place to spend the night. You forget, Marshal. I've been a Cheyenne for ten years. All right. Well, let's get started. I swear, Miss Phillips, I don't think you and Fawn are half as tired as I am. Chief Blackhorn insisted the women ride almost as much as the men, Chester. Uh, what sort of a fellow is he, ma'am? I was never acquainted with any Indians real well. Never mind that now, Chester. Now, let's stop here. Oh. Uh, this is the Dodge House, Miss Phillips. I'll go see if they have a room for you. Thank you, Marshal. Take my horse, Chester. Huh? Yes, sir, I got him. Uh, maybe you better tie them all up over there. I'm sure they got plenty of rooms. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, oh, good evening, Hank. Oh, hello, Marshal. Where you been? I, uh, got a couple of women outside, Hank. They'll want a room here for maybe, oh, two weeks. And so? Sure, Marshal, sure. I need some guests in this place. Two weeks. That's fine. Uh, give them your best room. Uh, they've come a long way. Certainly, certainly. You just bring them right in. Chester. Yes, sir? It's okay. Come on in. Where are they from, Marshal? Well, it's a long story, Hank. And, uh, don't ask them. Okay. Well, I'll be. Is this them? This is Hank Risling, Miss Phillips. Mrs. Phillips? I'll uh, get you some different clothes tomorrow, ma'am. That's all right, Marshal. You really a white woman? Yeah, of course she is. Mm. What about the girl? The girl's Cheyenne, but she's staying with Miss Phillips. No, no, not here she ain't. Now listen to me, Hank. Miss Phillips has been a captive of the Cheyennes for ten years. She got away and brought this girl with her, and they're tired, and they want a room. Never mind, Marshal. It doesn't matter. The white lady can stay here. But I ain't taking in no filthy Indians. You should be ashamed. And by tomorrow, you'll have to get out of that costume yourself. Shut up, Hank. I ain't running no hotels for Indians. Or, come to think of it, even for them that looks like Indians. No! Come on, let's get out of here. I apologize for him, 
Miss Phillips. <laughs> There'll only be trouble. I knew it. Now, I'll find a place for you. Don't worry. Chester. Hmm? Go over there and get Kitty, huh? Tell her I want to see her right away. Yes, sir. It isn't going to work, Marshal. Now, ma'am, nobody's going to bother you. I promise you they won't. It's been so long. So much has happened. But you've escaped now. You're out of it. No. No, Marshal, I didn't escape. What? I couldn't have escaped. I was allowed to leave. And Fawn was allowed to go with me. I never heard of Indians doing that before. It was the chief, Blackhorn. But why? Well, you may not understand it. But after the first few years, after I adapted myself to the tribe and its ways, I was treated kindly. But even so, I I knew I could never be happy with the Cheyennes away from my own people. And so Blackhorn just lets you come back? Yes. I know it seems strange, but he's a strong man, Marshal. A very strong man. All right. But uh, what about Fawn here? He must have known she'd end up on a reservation. No, never. Hello, Matt. Oh, Kitty, uh, this is Miss Phillips. I know. Chester told me. I'm glad to meet you, Mrs. Phillips. Thank you, Kitty. I got a room for you and the girl. It's out back of the Texas Trail. Belongs to a friend of mine. She'll move in with me while you need it. Oh, that's very kind of you. And her. Well, I was never caught by the Indians, but I know what it's like to be a stranger in town. Come on, I'll show it to you, and then we can get something to eat. I hope I can repay you. Oh, nonsense. Take the horses, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. Uh, shall we go, Mrs. Phillips? Excuse me, Kitty. I I want to say something to the marshal first. Sure. Here, Fawn, you take my hand. We'll walk on ahead. What is it, ma'am? A moment ago, you asked about Fawn. You said she'd go to a reservation. Well, that's what the colonel said. Fawn will stay with me, always. Well, I guess you're pretty fond of her. Yes, I am. You see, Marshal, Fawn is my daughter. <laughs> We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow in the daytime on most of these same stations, CBS Radio welcomes to the network the distinguished conductor Leopold Stokowski to conduct the new musical series, 20th Century Concert Hall. Mr. Stokowski conducts the CBS Radio Chamber Orchestra in the radio premiere of Nikolai Berezovsky's Adagio from the Sextet Concerto. This is a radio premiere in tribute to the composer, who was with the CBS Radio's orchestra for 22 years until his death last month. 20th Century Concert Hall starts tomorrow. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. It took a lot of courage for Miss Phillips to come back into the white man's world after ten years among the Cheyennes and to bring her daughter with her. I uh, didn't tell anybody about it. I figured she'd talk for herself when the time came. A week passed, and while the people of Dodge regarded Miss Phillips as a curiosity, they didn't take to her treating the child as an equal. And so they avoided them both. Kitty looked after him, though, and I saw them whenever I could. But it was Doc they really impressed. I never saw such a pair, Matt. Why, well, they live to be a hundred, both of them. <laughs> well, they look healthy, all right. Ah, there are a couple of chairs, Doc. Let's sit a while, huh? Oh, yes, I swear if I wasn't so old, I'd go live with the Indians myself. <laughs> Don't think you'd like it, Doc. 
I wouldn't... Why not? Too much work. Oh, no, not for me. As far as I can tell, there wouldn't be no patients. They're all too healthy. <laughs> oh, before you go, Doc, tell me something, huh? Huh? Do you, uh, think the girl is as frightened as she was at first? Oh, she'll come out of it. Just give her time. This is quite a change for her. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. There's one thing about Fawn, though. What? She isn't pure, Cheyenne. Well, she isn't? You know as well as I do that she isn't. Uh, it makes sort of a problem for Miss Phillips, doesn't it, Doc? People just treat her worse if they knew the truth, man. Marshal Dillon. Hello. I'm Jeff Hunter. Well, what can I do for you? I'm on my way to California, Marshal, so I ain't going to cause trouble. <laughs> well, that's fine. I want to talk to that woman, Mrs. Phillips, you brought to Dodge. Oh? What for, Hunter? Oh, I'll tell her that, Marshal. I just thought maybe it'd be easier if you took me there. You can stay while I'm talking to her, if you like. All right, Hunter. She lives back of the Texas Trail here. Come on, I'll show you the way. Uh, I'll see you later, Doc. Uh, sure, Matt. You live around here? Oh, I've been ranching, Marshal. It's too cold winters. I'm going to California. No? Yeah. Family? No. I'm alone. Now. Ah. Ah, here we are. Come in, Marshal. Oh, both of you. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Miss Phillips, uh, this is Jeff Hunter. How do you do? I'm proud to know you, ma'am. He uh, wants to talk to you, Miss Phillips. He looks like a good man to me, or I wouldn't have brought him here. Well, you're most welcome, Mr. Hunter. Miss Phillips, I've heard your story, some of it anyway. I thought maybe you might know something about my wife. Your wife? Yes, ma'am. The Arapahoes captured her about seven years ago. I know there's some Arapahoes and Cheyennes that are friendly, and I was wondering if you ever heard of her. Her name was Ruth. Oh, the Arapahoes had a white woman once. Blonde, captured on the Solomon River. I never met her, though. M my wife's a blonde, and that's the place it happened. Oh. Mr. Hunter, when I heard of her, she'd already died. I'm sorry. Ruth never was very strong. Shouldn't have brought her to this country. Wasn't your fault, Mr. Hunter. Things just happen sometimes, that's all. Maybe it's better she died. That could be. I hope it wasn't too hard for you, ma'am. It wasn't easy. Well, that's a right pretty little girl. What's her name? We call her Fawn. Oh, that's a pretty name, too. She takes after you, ma'am. What? Well, of course, she's a little different in color, but she kind of has your mouth. Marshal. You know, I've never said a word, Miss Phillips. Mr. Hunter, how'd you know Fawn's my daughter? Why, well, I just knew, that's all. How'd you know? Well, I heard there was a little girl, and nobody said so, but I figured she must be yours, and then when I saw her just now... I knew she was. I, I hope I haven't said anything to trouble you, ma'am. No. No, you haven't. But people have already made it hard. Sure. People talk, but they don't know. They got no idea what it was like. That's very true. I figured you're lucky you were able to bring her with you. Mr. Hunter, Fawn is a chief's daughter. Blackhorn. It was he who allowed us to leave the tribe. I'll be going now, ma'am. I hope everything will be all right with you. Goodbye, Mr. Hunter. Goodbye. Thanks for talking to me. I'll see you later, Miss Phillips. Yes, Marshal. Mm -hmm. 
Jeb Hunter didn't leave Dodge right away. Kitty told me that he ran into Miss Phillips on the street the next day and had another conversation. Later, I heard he took her and the girl fishing. I figured he was good company for them, and no harm could come of it. I was busy, and I sort of forgot about him for a few days. When one morning, a man walked into the office. Uh, Marshal Dillon? Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm Phillips. Roger Phillips. I, I've come for... Uh, for my wife. Well, when did you get into Dodge? Oh, I came in the Santa Fe last night. Last night? I thought it wisest to wait till morning. Oh. Well, it's your business, Phillips. Chester. Hmm? Go tell Miss Phillips her husband's here. I'll bring him over in a few minutes. Yes, sir. I'll go tell her, Mr. Dillon. Well, this is my first trip west in many years. Ever since uh, Mrs. Phillips was lost, in fact. Yeah. Are you staying? Staying? Oh, no. No, we'll go straight back to Boston. I much prefer it there. I see. Well, Miss Phillips is fine, although I have an idea you'll see some changes in her. I expect that. I expect that. She's been through a terrible experience, Marshal. Of course, we'll... Uh, We'll get her back to normal soon enough. Seems pretty normal to me right now. Really? Well, that's hard to imagine after ten years among the savages. I only hope she hasn't, well, lost too much. She was a well-bred woman, Marshal, and we... She still is. She's just learned more. I told her, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. I'll show you where she's staying, Phillips. Come along. I sure didn't think much of him, did you, Mr. Dillon? Uh, not much, Chester. Hmm. Awful uppity. Seems a shame. A fine woman like that. Well, maybe she can handle him. <laughs> if he's worth handling. It's not our problem, Chester. Well, no, sir, I guess not. Marshal, I want to talk to you. Good morning, Miss Phillips. Good morning, Marshal. Now, Marshal, you listen to me. Yeah? What is it? Well, I've just learned the full truth. I understand you've known about it all along. I hope you'll forgive me, Marshal. I told him you knew. There's nothing wrong with that, ma'am. The whole thing is wrong. A girl will go to a reservation where she belongs. This was arranged in Washington, No, Marshall. Roger. Never, never. Now, wait a minute, ma'am. Look, Phillips, the colonel at Fort Larned told me the arrangements, but he didn't know the facts, and neither did the people in Washington. Things are a little different now, don't you think? Well, you can hardly expect me to take that girl back to Boston. It's up to you, I guess. Well, then go over there and get her, Marshal. And hold her here in jail until we leave Dodge, and then you can do what you like with her after that. Roger. You must be a pretty big man in Boston, Of Phillips. course I am. But this is Dodge City. Nobody ever heard of you here. Now, why don't you calm down and decide what you're going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I won't leave her, Roger. I won't have her around, here or anywhere else. Then I'm sorry. What do you mean, you're sorry? Go back to Boston. I'll stay here. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I do. I'll divorce you. You'll never get a penny. I don't want your money. I wouldn't have it. Very well, then. Stay. No longer anything but a squaw anyway. Chester. Yes, sir? There's a train east leaving soon. Throw him on it. Oh, I'll do it gladly, Mr. Dillon. Miss Phillips. Go to your place and wait there for me, huh? I won't be long. All right, Marshal.
Come in, Marshal. Why, Mr. Hunter. Marshal told me to come along, ma'am. I hope it's all right. Come in. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Miss Phillips, I told Hunter here that uh, your husband arrived and that he's left. Yes. But uh, I didn't tell him that he might still try to cause trouble about the girl. Could he? Well, Colonel Bloor's orders were to put her on a reservation. And uh, it'd take a long time to change that through Washington. And Phillips knows it. What can I do, Marshal? Clear out? Where they can't find you? They'll all forget about it in time. That's a good idea, ma'am. If you don't mind my saying so. But how? I I can't just ride back out onto the prairie with her. No. No, she can't. Can she? Hunter. Well, sure wouldn't be right. <clears throat> well? Ma'am? Yes? I'm heading for California, like I told you. I can leave any time. I got plenty of room for two more, like you and your pretty little girl. Do you really want us? Well, I'll tell you. I've been waiting around Dodge so as I'd be sure that you were going to be all right. Uh, you understand? Yes. Yes, I understand. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Helen Cleave, John Daner, Edgar Barrier, Lawrence Dobkin, and Leo Curley. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. And now an announcement of interest to many of our listeners. The theme for Gunsmoke is an original melody by our musical director, Rex Corey. It is called Old Trail and is available at your local music store, both in sheet music form and as a commercial record. Beginning next week, Gunsmoke will be heard at a new time over most of these same CBS radio stations. Remember, Gunsmoke at a new time beginning next week, so check your local newspaper for the time. Be sure to join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, Fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. This Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater brings Joan Fontaine and Charlton Heston to its microphone, co starring in The President's Lady. That's on the Lux Radio Theater, the same night CBS Radio stars John Hodiak in Suspense's production of Hellfire. Yes, Monday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. George Walsh speaking. America now listens to 110 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS radio network.